Article 110, General Requirements for Electrical Installations. Let's talk about 110.16, Arc Flash Hazard Warning. The rules for warning workers of the dangers of arc flash were increased and clarified. All right, listen, 110.16 has been in the code since 2002, and we have changed it every single edition of the code, except, I think, in the 2014. So every three years, like clockwork, we change this section, but it's an important section, and we need to make sure that it's right, obviously, and we need to make sure that our workforce is armed with the information that they need, that they can do the job safely. All right, so let's take a look at what this section says. 110.16a didn't change. It says, look, equipment likely to require examination, adjustment, servicing, or maintenance while energized must be marked to warn qualified persons of arc flash dangers. All right, so here is the sticker. This is all you have to have to comply with the, court, with the code. Warning, arc flash. All right, that's it. Now, a lot of people have been bothered by this rule because ever since its inception it says it needs to warn qualified persons and people are like well if you're a qualified person by definition that means you've received safety training to recognize and avoid the risks and to reduce the hazards and it's like well okay fine but let's just be honest here for a minute who are the people getting blown up is it homeowners or is it the people wearing tools it's the people wearing tools Right? Those are the people getting blown. Homeowners shut things off. It's electricians that sometimes can't be bothered, and they work energized, and they end up getting themselves hurt. So, look, I, I'm not going to turn this into a whole big safety rant, but OSHA and 70E both say that you need to be working in de-energized conditions, all right, an electrically safe work condition, and that means it's shut off, it's tagged out, it's verified the, ver you know, to it, it's verified the the absence of voltage, and some other steps as well. Um, but here's the thing: whether it's an OSHA requirement, whether it's a 70 E requirement, um, you have people that love you, you know, and that depend on you and care about you. They want you to come home at the end of the day. All right, they don't want to visit you in the hospital because you got injured or, or killed in an arc flash incident. So whether OSHA says to not work energized or not, whether 70E requires it or not, you don't want to get be the guy that got injured in an arc flash. Uh, I'll show you a picture later on of a friend of mine who, who got injured, and it'll kind of bring it closer to home. But here's the deal. we got to have a warning to remind people that when things go wrong in our industry, they go very wrong very fast. All right, so warning, arc flash. Now the warning label must be visible to qualified persons before they operate the equipment. It has to use appropriate words, colors, and symbols. Be suitable for the environment, not be handwritten. It has to be permanent. All right, so some sort of a warning sticker like this, right? Some arc flash warning. So again, this, uh, this sticker here has more information than the code requires it. Okay, the code just requires warning, arc flash, Suitable colors, suitable words, right? All of that. 110.16b was added a couple of code cycles ago, but quite frankly, it, it didn't make a lot of sense. It, it said, listen, for certain equipment, and I think it said services only, in fact, it said if you have services rated 1200 amps or more, then you had to mark down the voltage and the available fault current and the clearing time. Okay, well, the reason we want to know the available fault current the voltage and the clearing time is that if I have those three pieces of information then I can get into NFPA 70E and I can use the table methods and figure out what the requisite PPE is. All right, I can figure out do I need to wear category 1, category 2, category 3, or category 4. So having that information is certainly a good thing. But there was also <laughs> kind of a, a kind of an oxymoron in, in, in the requirement because it said, okay, yeah, it, those things, by the way, those, those are the three things that influence the incident energy. All right, how bad is the fireball? Depends. What's the voltage? What's the available fault current? What's the clearing time? Well, when we talk about the clearing time, we're talking about how fast is the breaker or fuse upstream of us open, right, to, to minimize the duration of the fault. Well, why would I write the clearing time on the service equipment. The service equipment is the first place, that's, that's the first breaker or fuse, right? So if you're in the service disconnect 
and the service disconnect breaker trips, guess what? The arc flash is still happening. You gotta wait for the utility primary on the pull to cut open. And that might take next week. So it was kind of dumb to say you gotta mark the clearing time because that doesn't make any sense. So they changed that and here's what it says now. This, first of all, service equipment or feeder supplied equipment. All right, so it doesn't matter, it's not just the service disconnect, anything that's supplied by a feeder circuit as well. In addition to the signage required in A, warning arc flash, a permanent arc flash label is required for service equipment and feeder supplied equipment, rated 1,000 amps or more, located in other than dwelling units. All right, so certainly this piece of equipment is either supplied by a service or by a feeder, right? Just by definition, it couldn't possibly be supplied by a branch circuit. So this thing is rated 1,000 amps or more. It must have some other signage. Now, what is that other signage? Well, it says the label must include the date that it was applied, and it has to be in accordance with applicable industry practice. See, it says you have to have what? An arc flash label. Now, what's an arc flash label? That's something that probably ought to be defined. If we're going to tell people we have to have it, we can't not define it. What's an arc flash label? Well, it, it's, it's more than just warning arc flash, right? I think. I, that's certainly the intent. Has to include the date. Has to be in accordance with applicable industry practice. I think we're all going to agree that what they're trying to say is an arc flash label is something like this, right? Something where it has the voltage and the arc flash boundary and the incident energy and the voltage and everything else, right? So 25,000 volts, basically. 220 times, 222 inches is the arc flash boundary. Two things about that. Number one, if you're in the business of making these labels, don't tell me inches if it's more than 12 inches. Tell me feet and inches. I don't know how many feet 22 inches, 222 inches is. Give me, that doesn't help anybody. All right, so feet and inches. Don't tell me, don't, don't make me get my calculator out and everything else. Arc flash boundary is what? That's the distance from the source of the arc that you need to be in order to avoid second degree burns on exposed skin. Okay, so in other words, if you're naked in front of this equipment, within 222 inches of it and, it and it flashes, you're going to get a second degree burn. Now I say naked because of this. You're either wearing fuel or you're wearing PPE, right? Wearing nothing is better than wearing the wrong thing. Look, love this shirt. This shirt is comfy and it's from my steel tube guys. I would not want to be wearing this in an art flash because I better love this shirt because I'm going to be wearing it the rest of my life if I'm in an arc flash and it happens because it's going to melt into my flesh. All right? You need to have PPE on because if you're not wearing PPE, you're wearing fuel. Okay? So 222 inches is the arc flash boundary. That's where you get a second degree burn on exposed skin. The incident energy, 45 calories per square centimeter. Uh, that's, just, that's a measurement of, of how nasty the fireball is, right? It's a measurement of energy. So 45 calories, I better have 45 calorie rated equipment if I'm within 222 inches. And then if I'm in the, uh, the limited approach boundary, uh, excuse me, if I'm in within the restricted approach boundary, that's where I'm going to have shock protection PPE and that's where I'm gonna have my rubber gloves and my leather protectors over them, right? And you're gonna have shoes that are rated for EH and everything else that goes along with it. So you gotta have a sticker, in accordance with applicable industry standards. Now there's an informational note that they revised that says, listen, if you don't know what an applicable industry standard is, here's an example, NFPA 70E, that's an applicable industry standard. It has guidance for creating arc flash hazards, safe work practices, selection of PPE, incident energy levels, and other similar topics. All right, so there is your informational note. So again, 1,000 amps or more, Supplied by a service or a feeder, which once you get over a thousand amps, you're probably going to be supplied by a, by a brand by a circuit by a, a service or a feeder. Full blown arc flash label, thousand amps or more. There you go.